the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst two men, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst two men. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth to beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts. Amen. So we beg, we invite all those who are locked on to us, who will view us later on, and we enter in a whole new tridium again. Kind of roller coaster, but we thank God in the midst of it all. God, we know you are present. We trust in you. You are bigger than the sacrament. You are bigger than congregation. You are bigger than our will. Amen. Our entrance hymn is. It is our duty. It is our duty to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. He saves us and sets us free. Through him we find salvation, life, and resurrection. It is our duty. It is our duty, duty. to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. It is our duty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters, those who have locked on, those who are locked in, and we're just challenged a bit. 
So we just have a quarantine situation in this particular community. And just for these two days, we are having virtual masses alone. We start back on Easter vigil on Saturday evening. So we just bow our heads on this, this awesome Monday, Thursday, this great feast, the feast of the Eucharist, the feast of the priesthood, and the priest of the sacrament of service, going down to rise again. We just bring sin in our lives, and when we cling and grab at our own selves, when the law of the gift of love and the grace of the loop is about emptying ourselves and giving ourselves away, unlike what the Messiah they expected with power and majesty. He's going to show them a radical redesign of what the kingdom is like. And we too must imitate that, and we have, may have sinned since Adam and Eve. There was a meal, and the mystery of evil was very close to the meal. And we too, close to the meal, Judas was even closer and had a mission to kill Christ. So we bring all the sin that we have brought to the table when we are so close, and yet so far, like the Judas in us, like the Peter in us, like the little betrayals and the way we crucify him in our lives. We enter the stridium with a sense of sin that the same mercy that he poured out on the cross, he can pour it into our hearts. There's no misery. God's mercy cannot match. So bow your heads and as we come to the end of Lent, at this time at 6 o'clock Lent ends, we enter into a new fast, a fast of anticipation, the Easter fast, longing that this thing will end. But it, it will on the third day. So we thank God for our Lenten season and just thank God for what we have become and gone into ourselves and what we may have failed to do and we confess together as church. Idols in our lives, people, especially our enemies and the whole new kingdom is radical, is that you have to turn your cheek, give your cloak, walk an extra mile, contradictory to what the other kings, kingdoms are. How we treat this body, here we see you're going to go into the, he's going to be breaking bone and dying and just rising. This body will rise again and bring a whole creation before us in which we abuse and misuse and all our relationships against the Ten Commandments. And those who have joined us and those who are joining us, and especially those, it's very painful that the hunger in us to be congregating and hunger for the Eucharist. We'll go in a deeper way now for these two days. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, through my fault, through my fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, be merciful. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, Christ have mercy. So besides St. Joseph Day, we have a right now to sing our glory to God in the highest. Lord, we praise you. Lord, in spite of, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify, we trust in your decision, in your promise, in your mystery. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty, Lord, we glorify, Lord, in spite of everything that we are and everything that we are becoming belong to you. Only Son, Lord God. 
You take away sin, you absorb it and you return it. Peace, forgiveness. Have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. You are seated and pleading and intercessing. Father, you are seeking our interests at the right hand. You alone are God. You are Lord, 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 Lord. You are Lord, Lord, Lord. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory, in the glory of God the Father. Lord, we glorify. Lord, we magnify. Lord, we extol your name above all names. Let us bow our heads and pray. Oh God, you have called us to participate in this most sacred mystery. The Last Supper, Holy Mass, in which your only begotten Son went about and handed over him to death and trusted to this church a sacrifice new for all eternity, a banquet of sacred love. Father God, we pray that we draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please sit to listen to God's word. First reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one from each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle around your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It's a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night, I'll go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. So just bow our heads. Long ago, there was slavery, and 
even before man, there was a slave master dynamic, and that's what has gone into the 21st century. But God delivers and God frees people who are enslaved, and they walk through the water and the Red Sea, and God saves. Today at Holy Mass, you're going to go through the water in a bucket, in a basin, and to tell you that's how you initiate freedom. You have to enter into the water and stoop low and like in the River Jordan. And it's just a radical opposition to what the world tells us about freedom. It's about letting go and surrendering all. And they were freed and you too and I could be freed at the people of Israel. We ask our psalmist to bless us. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The blessing cup that we Just bow our heads, we welcome Paul's account. Paul is going to talk about the Eucharist, and this is what separates us from other theologies and other spiritualities. We are Eucharistic people, and we have a miracle every time we celebrate Mass. Apparently, every six seconds, a Mass is celebrated throughout the world. That's the reason why maybe we stand on our feet and we can breathe. It's through the salvific power or the representation of what happened on Good Friday comes on our altar. Paul speaks about it, real body, real blood. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in, in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was, this, he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread.
and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaiming his death. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, you are the Word of God, the living Word of God, Jesus, your Lord, a new commandment I give you, love one another just as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. With the words of my mind, my lips, and my heart proclaim good news. It was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had also loved those who were in this world, and now he showed how perfect his love was. And they were at supper, and the devil had already put into the head of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to, pre to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, that he had come from God, and he was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. And then he poured water into a, bas into a basin, began to wash disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, at the moment you do not know what I am doing, Peter, but later on you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, if, you, if I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then Lord said Simon Peter, not wash my feet, wash my hands and wash my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He's clean all over. You two are clean even though not all of you are clean. He knew who, he was, going, who was going to betray him. And that is why he said, though not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet, put his clothes back on again, and went back to the table, he said, Do you understand what I've done to you? You call me master and lord, and rightly so. I am master, I am lord. But if then I am lord and master, and I have washed your feet, you should wash others' feet. I've given you an example and model, so you can copy what I've done to you. The good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a move. Thy word, we just ask God's word to minister to us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. 
Amen, church. So we sit and we just thank God for this moment. It is also very difficult to speak to a little bulb again, but time goes and we are in quarantine. This community, just about 80 people or so until Saturday evening. So we get back in congregation. The other communities will be having their in-person liturgies on Saturday too. So to today, church, this is a very powerful evening and this is when Lent finishes. People always, always want to ask when Lent ends and People want to stay in Lent, but Lent ends at 6 p.m. on Holy Thursday because there's a new fast that begins today. It's a fast of anticipation. And on this day, it's called Monday Thursday, and it's very powerful. It means a command. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not giving you an option. Today, I'm, I'm commanding you to copy, to imitate what I'm doing. Because just on Sunday, you understood I'm coming on a donkey. Just on Sunday, you understood that you know, you saw some pomp and, 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 and pleasantries and you, you saw some activity that made you feel that the Messiah will come high and mighty with pomp and splendor. But today I'm teaching you something. There's rather not an even more better evening than Holy Thursday because it brings us to the Thursday, the 26th of April in the year 30, when this happened. What happened today is three major Passovers. The first one, is the Passover of the Eucharist. In this Mass, that's why we have incense and that's why we, we have the biggest Mass because this is where the institution, this is where Jesus says, this is the Last Supper and do this, I command you in memory of me. And it is very important because the Eucharist is a meal that you saw Adam and Eve rejected. He, it is where the Lamb of God comes that John prophesied. This is his sacramental presence. This is when he gave himself away. Tell you know, the, the greatest thing is that first lesson, is the law of gift and the loop of grace. I am teaching you, contrary to the other people and the other messiahs and the other gods, that the only secret of Christian living is that if you want to gain happiness, if you want to gain peace, if you want to gain joy, you have to give it away. And today you see Jesus on his thro throne very here. He's saying other people will cling and hold to power, but I will give my whole self away to you. And you too must copy that. And you too must imitate it. That's very powerful. The first Passover is taking a Passover from um, work of human hands. You will, see, you will hear in, in the Jewish prayer, um, blessed are you, Lord of all creation, the work of human hands, bread and wine, and he's going to transubstantiate it into his very presence. So that first Passover is taking simple bread and wine that we bring, that we make, that's accessible to all, that he's going to become his very presence. The second Passover is taking little people like me, big mouth, unworthy servants, and making them priests. And making you, who were born carnal maybe because of Adam and have original sin. You too now have the power to be baptized in him. And you too have what you call priest, prophet, and king. So taking little you, little whoever you are, and transcribing you into a Passover to a Christian. Me now, an ordinary person, will be ordained that whatever I touch now, I touch the very. It's not based on my moral compass. And the third Passover is the Passover of what we think of what the world is driving us to is what we call the Passover of humility and servanthood and downward mobility, which he's passing the thought that no longer success is built on upward mobility. It is actually going down. It's servitude. You see what's happening in the manger. You see what, when he dipped down in, in, in the river God, J Jordan. You, you know when he came on a donkey. You know when he stepped down into Lazarus' tomb. And he said, Lazarus, come out. You know when he stepped down and, and spoke to the woman at the well. You know when he touched death in name. You know in the garden of Bethlehem when he put his head down. All those washing of feet. And on Saturday, to, um, Saturday is very frightening. He went deep into hell. So the, the, the movement is from Judas to Peter. I really want to talk about Judas because it is very, very hard for me to understand that Judas was so close to the disciples and sometimes people are close to you, but you don't know their mind. You think the holy and you think they with us in the team. Why did Judas was so intimate with God and God gave him, you know, the, entrusted him with the treasure of, of being a treasurer. But he was so far. And why come people in church sometimes so look so holy and so close and yet we don't know what's in their mind? Judas wanted to kill Judas. God, but he was very close to the altar, to the table. Similarly, in the, uh, in the altar of the Garden of Gethsemane, Adam and Eve were there, and evil was around it. So somehow, there's a Passover between, somehow, this altar draws evil. Somehow, 
the church draws evil. It's a, it's a mystery of evil. I don't understand it. Why would Judas be so close in mind and heart? And why would Adam and Eve at that meal and still be um, being prompted by the Satan? This is called really the mystery of evil. You're so close and you're dabbling. Some people really come and they don't have a clue what's happening on the altar because they're so distant, but they dress up and they're in it, but they're not, they're not, they're not inside of it because they're dabbling. It's, it's, man prefers isolation of sin than the festivity of a promise of a meal. Man prefer to ignore thoughts. Man prefer to be here and not here than get the, the benefit of grace that comes from the altar. That's a, that's a Passover of, of what, what we call from a Judas to a Peter. The difference is that they both were bad. But Judas was more evil because Judas didn't um, give his hand over to God for reconciliation. And Peter says, Lord, I'm sorry. There's a Peter in all of us. There's a Judas. But Judas says, no, I don't want you, God. I don't want contrition. I don't want um, reparation. I don't want confession. And some of us will come to sacrament without confession. And that is why he's washing feet today because you have to wash your body before you go to communion. There's a correlation, a link between confession and eating and drinking of him. That's why it's, it's, it's not order. Today we can't do it. It's been omitted from the liturgy because of the of Vatican. But that's the sequence of it. He stripped down, he bent over, he washed feet. That is not what a master does. He's switching the Passover from bread and wine to his presence. He's switching ordinary people like you and me. You become priest, prophet, and king from your baptism. He's also switching, I am just a normal person, and I am just me becoming a priest of God. And when I touch this and I say the right words, it becomes the presence of God. And similarly, he's touching that he is making the presence of God, Judas, and the people who come close to God, that the mystery of evil is so much inside of us that we have to be very careful that we have to offer ourselves to confession and contrition before we even receive God. Peter did it, and Peter became the saint. And Peter did it and became the first pope. One person said to me last week, and was very, very clear, though there are big betrayals in our life and little Judas in us, what mattered about Judas apparently people thought. Judas loved God and Judas was just bluffing, they thought, and uh, they said that Judas wanted to jumpstart the mission and they thought, he thought that Jesus was just dragging his feet. And that's the reason he hung himself because it backfired on him. It really came out to death. That's one theory. I don't know if you want to believe it. Judas loved God, but it backfired on him. And when God went to Holy Saturday, maybe to extend his arm, he says, I don't want you. I'm just asking ourselves, if we are close to the altar, have we passed over to the content of the altar? Or are we remaining in the mystery of evil? If we are baptized, have we been transformed from carnal being, from physical, or have we been passed over to a new spiritual being? And, 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 and similarly, if we are in a master-slave dynamic, because master-slave dynamic is what runs the world. It's called the lust to dominate. Somehow you want to be powered, you want to be on top, you want to distant and divide people, you want to seize power, you want to shorten the table, you want to heighten the fence, you want to put them against us because we are Catholic and we are Christian, we judge people across. It, it happens at the lunch table, it happens in the choir practice, it happens in the priest table, it happens in the maxi taxi, it happens in double stand. There's a lust to dominate. That's why in the Old Testament there was slavery. And there's a new kind of slavery now. It's called slavery to sin, slavery to love, slavery to human relationships. I don't know. But slavery existed with the Israelites, and there was liberation. But God says 400 years is plenty. African slavery apparently was 250. That was plenty slavery, 400 years. But God said, I am going to liberate. I will pass over blood, and I won't kill. I will open the way. God is always liberating. He is changing the slave master dynamic through the Red Sea, and that is the same Red Sea. He is saying, the water that I wash you with will pass you over, will initiate you into a, a, a master-slave relationship where the master doesn't overpower the slave. The master becomes like a slave, lower himself, take out his apron, and telling you now, you too must not lord over people. You too must not be a master. You must not be lust to power. You too must open your table. You too must wash other people's foot. You too must lower and invite the sick. 
You must sit with slaves. You too must not go for eye for an eye. You too must learn to love enemy. It's a whole new dynamic. This whole mass is switching, overturning the master-slave dynamic. What you're running for and you're, you're pursuing in your life, Jesus Christ is the new kingdom. And he says, watch out how we treat the least little and, and last and lost and lonely. He says, you are, have to become like a slave to be part of me. He told Peter, it's a whole radical. That's why tomorrow he's going to go on a cross. That's why tomorrow he's going to belittle himself and be scarred and jarred upon. That's why tomorrow he's going to die. To tell you, the only way up is down. Inside out. The only way. Love is the only force that can make things one without destroying it. Can you repeat? Love is the only thing. It's the only force that can make things one without destroying it. So today... Monday, Thursday, it means commandment. It means I, I, I don't invite you really. I command you to love and love one another. I command you to make that Passover from bread and wine to see my presence as the Eucharist. One break sacrament, one big mystery. Two, I command you to move from your carnal self and live out your baptismal promise. And I instituted to be a priest, I must live out and make a vow now to make a commitment to God. And thirdly, understand the Passover from Judas to Peter. Basically, accept the confession, accept the washing to move to the altar and not let the mystery of evil override and overpower us like what it did to Satan and left to self-destruction. So I just want you to close your eyes as we look at these three Passovers and, and give ourselves away. Because he said so today, on the night he was betrayed, we do so. There's an old story that says, because you say so, I do so. And a man asks once, can you mash up the diamond? The man says, no, I can't, it's too precious. And the people says, go, you've been promoted. Another man says, can you mash up the diamond? He says, no, I just can't. People tell me I shouldn't. And a third man came and he says, yes. And he asks for a hammer. And he says, I mash it up. You know why? Because your words are more precious than the diamond. We thank God for his word today, which is love is the loop of grace, giving yourself away. Love is, you know, overriding the dynamic of master slave and becoming slave as a master. So wherever you are, I know it is hard and I know it's hard to be listening in today in a day that we want to congregate and celebrate the priesthood and the Eucharist and humility and dipping low and moving from the heights and lowering down and moving from Judas to Peter. But we just commit to giving ourselves away and, and commit to obedience in this time of pandemic and threatening rising cases. So you could use me and not abuse me. Lord, use us. We could use you and not muse you. You can use me. Lord, as you bend low today and you went into the river Jordan and you went into a manger and you sat on a donkey and you stooped down and you called Lazarus and you touched leprosy and you bowed your head to a woman at the well and you, your head was on a rock at Gethsemane. You washed feet today, and into hell you went to the deepest, darkest human dysfunctionality to offer your hand, to break up that master-slave dynamic. Lord, we pray that that mystery of evil that's in our altar, the mystery of evil that is close to our Eucharist, the little Judas in us, Lord, the denial of Peter, will be reconciled tonight. So you could use me. Lord, thank you for that link between moral cleanliness and the reception of Holy Communion. For many of us, Lord, don't know the, well, the power of the Eucharist, Lord, and the power of Holy Mass, which you instituted here today in this Holy Mass Monday. And you commanded us because you said so. You give us a new command. You give us a new covenant. Come, Lord, and the hour has come. Thank you for these Passovers, Lord, these three Passovers. The first one, Lord, is from the Judas to the Peter. Bad and bad, but one offering reconciliation and accepting it. 
one accepting retri retribution, one accepting recompense. Give myself. Lord, take us, Lord. We ask those who are locked into us. So many, uh, especially sister who is from London and our brother who is from Australia. On this lasting supper, not last supper, on this lasting supper, on Monday, Thursday in the year 30, April 6th, Lord, we imitate, we copy. Lord, why would Judas be so close to the altar? Why would he be so intimate? Why would you have entrusted the treasury to him and he turned his back on you? Why would we, Lord, all of us prefer isolation of sin and darkness and dabbling rather than the festivity of true worship, the festivity of joy, the festivity of, of our true meal? Lord, it's by giving ourselves away. You can use me, Lord. Thank you for your sacramental presence. Lord, thank you for your connection with heaven and earth. Thank you for reconciling us again. Self away. Here we are, Lord, in the midst of a pandemic, rising cases, but we believe you are in our mix, Lord. We will make it. We are here, Lord. We will make with you. We hum that quietly. Lord, all over the world, there is a master slave dynamic, a top down, we and the other, outsiders, insiders, Christian, non Christian, church goers, non church goers, privileged, unprivileged, even at our altar, even our, our lunch table, even our maxi stands, Lord. We shorten table and lower height and fence. But that's not what you call us today for. That's what they expected of you. They expected you to lustfully dominate. But you freed that slave master mentality in Egypt. 400 years of slavery. And that same water that you overcame, that master slave dynamic, is the same water you washed us today. And that's why I say, Peter, get behind me. You don't know what I'm doing. I am emptying. I am radically turn it around a different way of the kingdom the kingdom lord is so different it's hungering not for clamor and not for hoarding and possession and career it's for righteousness it's not striving for power like james and john it's becoming meek and merciful and compassionate it's not you know eye for an eye it's not if it's turn another cheek it is giving you cloak it'll walk in an extra mile it's loving your enemy this thing is so radical lord help us to be away from the mystery of evil close to the banquet like the Judas in us Lord help us to open more table like you did Lord help us to get the word you said prostitutes and tax collectors and some evildoers will get in before us Lord this whole thing is just radically turning us inside out upside down that's why you're coming on a donkey. That's why you're in the River Jordan. That's why you're touching tomb. That's why you're touching leprosy. That's why you're talking to a woman by the well. That's why you're extending the table. That's why you're washing feet. That's why this thing is so unnerving. Today you give us a new initiation, like the Red Sea, to cleanse, to go to communion, and pass over from this present world, and pass from unhappiness and joy, and give ourselves away, because that's what love is. You command us to love this way, to live this way, and to tune over the dynamic of master and slave, posh and unposh, known and unknown, privileged and unprivileged. Lord, it's so radical. We thank you. We empty ourselves because if we want happiness, we give it away. If we want joy, we give it away. If we want peace, we give it away. If we want love, we have to give it away. It's all in itself emptying. You didn't cling to your divine nature, St. Paul says. And now you even come under us for bread and wine, such menial as elements lord what a gift and in the eucharist you use mere priests unworthy and in the eucharist lord you says close to you are judas's please wash your feet please go to confession before you receive me help us to take this serious lord and not take any shortcuts and not make it any more mockery take myself away so you can use me take myself Amen. And we thank God for this word because it's about six times 
he didn't turn away when he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever, whoever eats and drinks, he didn't soften the language. And the more they walked away, the more he kept on to say, this is not a symbol. It's not a sign. This is literal. Six times in John chapter 6, he said it. Unless you eat and drink, you have. He was not talking symbolically. That's what other churches says. No, he was talking. You have to eat and drink of me. Literally chew on it. That's why we have adoration. That's why we have the Eucharist. So I want to do a little execution of the word. And it means wherever you are, in your living rooms, in your taxi, wherever you're listening to us, I want you to claim the word because you said so there is power in the word. So I'm going to say the word today and I'm going to execute the word. And you have to say it after me with conviction. Jesus said... Jesus said, I myself am the living bread come down from heaven. Jesus said, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and do not drink the blood, you will not have life in you. Jesus said, anyone who eats my flesh and anyone who drinks my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. This is my will and this is the will of the Father. Jesus said, this is a bread that come down from heaven. Not the bread that came like our ancestors ate. They are dead. Israelites are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said, the bread I give to you is my own flesh for the life of this world. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe because faith in this can move mountains. So on this big solemnity and so many things happening loaded. Even on this, we used to bless oil and the chrism mass. That's why we took it back on a Monday to give the whole priesthood its presence. It's this presence of priests, you renewing your baptism promise on Sun Saturday evening, six times you're going to say I do again, that's what the vigil mass is about, and this great Passover from bread and wine to the Eucharist, a meal and a lamb of God and giving himself sacramentally now for a loop of grace and also the sacrament of service, servitude and servanthood and downward mobility breaking up that master slave dynamic because he has changed everything just close your eyes and bring your prayer wherever you are. People have asked us who are locked on to us now for petitions. Wherever you are, you, are, you can key in your petitions. And we pray for Denzel Ramjat, Ramjatan, Wendy's brother, as you continue to pray for him. Dana Marie and Bernadette Weeks who have died. Pray for healing for Susan Caldero, Sherwin Warwick, Jude Rochford. Henderson, Henry K. Lakatu. Birthday for Yvonne and Mr. King. Thanksgiving for Christine from a success, recovery from a surgery. Pray for our council, online ministers who write every day on the internet, breaking the word and feeding people. Dr. Jason and Drew Elliott. For many people who are struggling now with our COVID experience and challenges, especially those who, maybe 30,000, 90,000 people who have offered their arms for vaccine as a test to make this vaccine approved for the common good. If they did not, we would not have a vaccine approved, tested. They risk their lives and exactly what God is doing today, giving himself a way to save others. But nobody's looking at them, maybe frontline workers, those are essential workers who are giving themselves a way. And many who give themselves a way to the altar. All priests, religious, consecrated lay, and many people give their life to the Eucharistic table. And many who stay around the table, little Judases, with the mystery of evil, close, dabbling in darkness, preferring dabbling with the isolation of sin rather than festivity of union and joy and meal and, and communion. We pray for little Judas and little betrayals in us. They, we play God when we thought that the the mission should have been jump-started. That's the mind people feel of Judas. Maybe his fault, maybe he meant well, but he was playing God. You can't play God. 
and all those who've locked in now to us. We ask for Josephine who's asking for prayers. Those who are locked into us. Helen and Damody and Lee and all those who would have loved to be here, Judy and Dave and, and those who are in quarantine and obedience to the authorities. We just submit and surrender and thank God for this awesome solemnity. Three things happening, the Eucharist, priesthood and servanthood, sacrament of giving away and going down and unleashing power from within to include others and abandoning the lust to dominate and to be on top like James and John. Imagine God is telling you to be at top means to be at the bottom. That's a secret again. And all these prayers we pray in the kingdom is a whole different attitude that overturns master slave dynamic. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning it's now and ever shall be world without end amen and because of the diversity of our world father gutenberg who does so much great work with our migrants taking care of the least and the little and the last he has extended the table he has lowered the fence he will do this eucharistic prayer i mean in another language but any other language is the language of love so we have our offertory him as we present our gifts Será para nosotros la vida de salvación. Acepta, Señor, nuestro corazón.
Oren, hermanos, para que este sacrificio que es mío y también de ustedes, le agrade a Dios Padre Todopoderoso. Concédenos, Señor, participar dignamente en estos misterios porque cada vez que celebramos el memorial de este sacrificio, se realiza la obra de la redención. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor, el Señor esté con ustedes. Levantemos el corazón. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. En verdad, es justo y necesario, es nuestro deber y salvación, darte gracias y alabarte siempre y en todo lugar, Señor Padre Santo, Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, por Cristo Señor nuestro. Porque se acercan ya los días santos de la pasión salvadora y de la gloriosa resurrección de Jesucristo nuestro Señor, en los que celebramos su triunfo sobre la soberbia del demonio, y recordamos el misterio de nuestra redención. Por eso, los ángeles te cantan con júbilo eterno y nosotros nos unimos a sus voces, cantando humildemente tu alabanza. Santo eres en verdad, Señor, fuente de toda santidad. Por eso te pedimos que santifiques estos dones, enviando sobre ellos tu Espíritu para que se conviertan en el cuerpo y la sangre de Jesucristo nuestro Señor, el cual, cuando iba a ser entregado a su pasión voluntariamente aceptada, tomó pan. Dando gracias, te bendijo. Lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y coman todos de él, porque esto es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes. Del mismo modo, acabada la cena, tomó el cáliz y dándote gracias, de nuevo lo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y beban todos de él, porque este es el cáliz de mi sangre, sangre de la alianza nueva y eterna, que será derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en conmemoración mía. Este es el sacramento de nuestra fe. Así pues, Padre, al celebrar ahora el memorial de la pasión salvadora de tu Hijo, te ofrecemos el pan de vida y el cáliz de salvación y te damos gracias 
porque nos permite celebrar en tu presencia. Te pedimos con humildad que el Espíritu Santo nos mantenga unidos a cuantos participamos del cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo. Acuérdate, Señor, de tu iglesia peregrina en la tierra. Y con tu siervo, el Papa Francisco, con nuestros obispos Jason Gordon y Jaime José, y todos los pastores que cuidan de tu pueblo, llévala a su perfección por la caridad. Acuérdate también de nuestros hermanos que se durmieron en la esperanza de la resurrección y de todos los que han muerto en tu misericordia. Admítelos a contemplar la luz de tu rostro. Apiádate de todos nosotros y así, con la Virgen María, Madre de Dios y Madre Nuestra. Con San José, su castísimo esposo, con San Miguel Arcángel, los apóstoles y cuanto vivieron en tu amistad a través de los tiempos, Merezcamos por tu Hijo Jesucristo compartir la vida eterna y cantar tus alabanzas. Por Cristo, con Él y en Él. A ti Dios Padre Omnipotente en la unidad del Espíritu Santo. Todo honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo y mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad. Tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz del Señor esté con todos ustedes. Hermanos, este es Jesucristo, el que se entregó para salvarnos, el que ordenó sacerdotes para que perpetuaran este sacrificio. Dichosos los invitados a esta cena. Oh. 
We just have our one or two verses of our communion hymn. So those who have not received them sacramentally, who are with us on the virtual presence, you can just join your hands and at least receive them spiritually. Say in your hearts, I love you, Lord. I love you above all things. And, and since I cannot receive you today sacramentally, what we represent on the altar that happened on this Holy Thursday can go to you and come into his very presence. I love you, Lord, and I know since I can't receive you sacramentally, at least I can receive you spiritually. Come into my heart. So we're just going to bow our heads and we're going to have the beginning of the tritium where the Blessed Sacrament is going to be in a special altar repose. And no adoration takes place after midnight. Tomorrow is Good Friday. So we have begun a new fast now. Lent has ended. We have a fast of anticipation, the Easter fast. So we out all the lights in the church. That's even on the sanctuary that we will now process to the Blessed Sacrament altar of repose. And where we just going to, like he asks, could you stay with me one hour? He's in the garden. He's bowing his head again. He's bending low. He's going deep into his own will. And we will bring all the Blessed Sacrament from the church and the altar will be stripped. Just to tell you that it's been stripped of his dignity and He's going to go tomorrow and accept all human dysfunctional sin you're going to throw on him. And he is going to die and then go to hell, maybe to extend his arm to those who, the mysterious people who are so close to the altar and the banquet, but prefer isolation or division and sin and bad worship and mockery and the little Judas in us. 
Unlike Peter, Judas did not accept contrition and confession and washing of feet. But you must have it before you participate on the altar and the table. And that's why the table leads into paradise. So similarly, you can't have that divisive dynamic of master slave. You had to go low to be part of the table. Like what he did with the prostitutes and tax collectors, woman of the well and the Jordan and Lazarus, his whole life was dipping low. So we just kneel wherever you are and we have the altar stripped. We take our blessed sacrament to the altar repose in our presbytery and you too, I invite us, the church invites us to go into somber silence, whispering silence today and tomorrow and we'll burst out on Saturday evening and vigil at here with people at 6 p.m. We sing our sacrament most holy as we bring our sacrament out and from the tabernacle.